Some of you may have seen this viral video floating around lately. I wanted to ask the guy in the video, Cole Kerrigan, for more information, so I contacted him on Twitter. I asked him if he could give me more information, and he refused. I told him that I was just trying to clarify a couple of things, and he told me, There's literally nothing to talk about. Just know that if you use my footage, I will take down your video for copyright. So yeah, it was a pretty short conversation. And then Twitter was like, you can't send messages to this person. At first I was thinking, it's because I have an Android, isn't it? But no, it turns out he just blocked me. Like, I could not believe what I was seeing. I could not believe it. And you shouldn't either, because I made it up just now, and the screenshots are fake. Today I'm talking about how influencers use drama to manipulate millions of people, inflate their bank accounts, and 9 times out of 10, completely get away with it. You know, kind of like Cole Kerrigan and the Ace family. But first I have to preface this with two very important things. One, the Ace family is disgusting, and I'm not, not planning to, and never have been supporting or defending them in any way. And two, I'm not here to prove or debunk the allegations that were recently brought up against Austin of the Ace family, because both of those things are very serious topics and there's no way I could make a video about it so quickly. So instead, I'm here to talk about why that video should ever have been made in the first place. It all started when makeup vlogger Cole Kerrigan tweeted out that Austin McBroom of the Ace family, a family vlogging channel with over 17 million subscribers, allegedly cheated on his YouTube wife with many of Cole's friends, and in addition to that was a criminal who actually assaulted one of Cole's friends, and that he paid off one of the largest drama channels $500,000 to keep the story quiet. This information came out of literally nowhere, and everybody was asking Cole to make a video about it. So make a video he did. He started by addressing the fact that after his tweets started going viral, Someone from Austin's team allegedly contacted the victim and warned her that she should stop Cole from making the video before they faced consequences. And someone from Austin McBroom's team actually texted my friend that this happened to, I'll put the screenshot right here, and I proceeded to tell her they're just trying to scare you, I just went through this exact same thing so I'm not scared. What needs to be said is going to be said regardless, and if I need to say it, I'll do it. So this was already a weird start to the video for me because Cole just admits that he was the one who decided to come forward with the story. In fact, she wouldn't have even gotten those threatening texts if he wasn't tweeting about her situation in the first place. Anyway, then Keemstar from Drama Alert, the big channel who allegedly took the payoff, contacted Cole and asked if he could speak to the alleged victim. She said no. I talked to her and I just told her really how much she would be helping other girls and not only herself and getting justice for herself, but helping other people in the future from this happening. I, I kind of convinced her to talk to him. So here he pressures her into giving her story to Keemstar when she didn't want to. So according to Cole, Keemstar wound up backing out because of the payoff. So I texted him saying how much did they pay you to keep quiet and he responded with this and I was completely shocked. I immediately called my friend and told her that he was paid off $500,000 to keep quiet about the situation and that I needed to come forward. Okay, so he just said point blank that he decided to come forward again and he even explains that she did not want to because she felt unsafe. Obviously she was really hesitant about this because that would lead to more information about her being put out there. If she didn't want to do this, she didn't have to, and I wanted to make her feel as comfortable as possible. If she didn't want to do it, she didn't have to. But she didn't want to do it. Cole said that this was his idea. The more times I watched this video, the more concerning it got, as I realized he's just explaining how he manipulated and forced her friend to kind of give him permission to go forward with her story. Now, the rest of the video is what you would have to watch for yourself to decide how you feel about it. It's just him going through the timeline of events. Then he decides to call, not the friend, but one of his other friends who was also there at the time, apparently. And all of a sudden, I hear her yelling no and screaming and crying. So this other friend heard it going on, but wasn't in the room or something, I don't know. It was kind of hard to follow. But after that, Cole concludes the call and that's it. Okay, so now that you literally have the point of view from somebody who was actually there, that is enough proof and I really don't need to provide anything else. That's not really how that works. After all, he showed a couple of photos, a lot of screenshots, and 
one anonymous person talking through a voice changer. Now, just because those things aren't evidence does not mean that what's happening in the video isn't true. But at the same time, that's nowhere near enough for everyone to just blindly believe everything he's saying and oh, never mind, they did. Nothing in this video really proves or disproves what happened, it was just bringing allegations to light, which is much different. But as stated multiple times by Cole himself, the victim didn't want to do that. So why did he make the video? It's just not something that I as a person can stay quiet on. It's just against my morals and it's something I absolutely won't do. This is literally just to bring awareness to people who are in a similar situation that it's okay and it happens and you're not alone. So I hope you guys take something from this that not everything is what it seems to be online. You know, that's the only thing he said in this video so far that I'm positive about. I really don't think this video is what it seems because I'm pretty sure he's lying about the entire reason he made it. See, if there's one thing Cole's good at, it's getting people to talk about his videos. The society that I was raised around in Texas was so different than how things are today. People normalize saying those words around each other like it was normal. That's crazy because we're the exact same age and I grew up in Texas too and I just, I, I don't remember people saying things like, Johnny, can I have a goddamn your ass and pencil? Sorry, Ms. Grayson, I didn't do my damn homework. When I was 12, but yeah, I don't know. That seems like something I would remember. But honestly, saying that kind of stuff when you're 12 is literally harmless. Um, it's just the fact that this behavior continued all the way up through 2017 that led many people to question his apology video. But, you know, having a dark past wasn't enough to propel him into the spotlight, unlike some people. So, he looked for other opportunities. He tried joining and subsequently leaving Team 10. That got him a couple of million views, but it didn't really do anything for his career. He tried starting a very one-sided beef with Cameron Dallas, and again, that didn't do much. See, for someone who tried to get into the limelight so frequently, his friend coming and confiding in him him with her story of assault was a business opportunity. There's a reason we don't pressure people into talking about things that they're not ready to yet because the day that video went up, people immediately found the girls he was talking about within the same day. He said he made the video because of his morals, but he knew about this story for four months before saying anything, and he only went public with it once. One of his tweets about the Ace family got nearly 100,000 likes. He's an opportunist. Well, if all this wasn't weird enough, he tried to extort $100,000 from the Ace family. See, when Keemstar told him that he got paid off $500,000, which was a joke, by the way, but Cole conveniently left that out, Cole initially believed it. So Cole thought, I can get at least $100,000 out of it. He told his friends that they would split the 100K. And see, I wouldn't believe that this screenshot was real either, except the YouTube channel T-Spill asked Cole himself, if these were real, and Cole himself said they were. After realizing that they weren't going to get the money, they went forward with the video anyway, and all chaos ensued. Some people are saying that she should have gone to the police if it really happened. Some people are saying that, you know, Austin McBroom is a saint and he would never do this. Other people are saying we should just believe everything that's in that video. And honestly, those are all pretty ignorant and dangerous ways of looking at the situation. So unlike most videos I've seen about the topic, I'm not here to try to lead you to believe one thing or the other. What I truly believe is that we shouldn't be talking about this. Misconduct allegations, life-threatening issues, criminal activity, these are the kinds of things that don't get fixed by talking about them on the internet, but definitely get worse. It's not like some old tweets here and there. The reason this doesn't work online is because the internet doesn't have respect for victims. It puts all of its energy into bringing down the accused. People don't care about how the people who have been hurt feel. They just want to see somebody get taken down. And so with all that knowledge, I could completely understand why Cole's friend did not want to bring this to everyone's attention just four months after it had happened, but Cole still pressured her into doing that anyway. People think that drama is a game and that we are all the players, but the issue is these influencers see us as the pieces. They don't even have to have a straight story anymore. As long as you're talking about it, they're profiting. So if they can manipulate us into having these conversations that we should never have had in the first place, it's free entertainment for us, free money for them, and it's only at the expense of the actual victim. And in this case, the victim herself never wanted to come forward in the first place. In conclusion, I made this video because I feel like everyone was looking at this as a very black and white situation, but it was never our situation in the same way that it was never Cole's to begin with. We had this whole dialogue where everyone got to speak 
except the victim. Or that's my perspective anyway. Anyway, leave a like, tell me what you think, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you to my 215,000 subscribers. Okay, bye.